Hey there, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily or at M Hughes Art. I'm really happy you found your way here. So today, I still can't believe it, but I have a 50 color set of Sennelier oil pastels. It's in a super lovely wood box. My friends over at Above Ground Art Supplies in Toronto kindly gifted these to me. So huge thank you to them for sponsoring this video and for giving me the opportunity to get to work with such lovely materials. I'm really excited. So we have a couple pamphlets here. There's a little bit about their different sets. Here's 120 colors, 100% light fast. Okay, so I wonder what colors are in this set. I just realized that the paper wrapping has all of the colors here. So I think I might cut this out and maybe tape it to the lid of this box so that I know which colors were originally in this set. So if I need to replace one, I'll have a little guide. So Above Ground also sent me their 9x12 mixed media premium series pad. I really love the sort of retro look that this has. Really cool. It's cold press and I think this is going to be really nice for not only swatching but working with the oil pastels. Time to swatch. This has to be my favorite part of trying new art supplies. So immediately upon swatching these, it became super apparent that these oil pastels are jam-packed with pigment. You can just tell that you're using a super high-end material. They just went down so nicely. I thought the color selection was absolutely stunning. I really loved the blues and greens in this set. Some of my favorite colors in this set are English Grey, Celadon Green, Violet Ochre, the Chinese Orange, and also the Geranium Lake Light. I hope you enjoy all of the swatching and let me know which colors are your favorite. I apologize for my terrible, messy writing. I also quickly swatched the Sennelier pastels that I already owned on a separate piece of paper. When I was in art school, I would go into above ground and I would just stare at the wall of Sennelier oil pastels and sometimes I just couldn't resist picking out one or two. So yeah, I wanted to know which ones I had and I did have a few duplicates. The really surprising thing is that I had quite a few metallic oil pastels and I don't know who I thought I was when I picked those up because I really don't use metallics. I must have just been so taken with their beauty that I, I had to buy them. <laughs> so to get started with these, I wanted to do something really low stakes to get my, you know, new supply jitters out. So I just did a little sketch in my sketchbook of a glass bottle and I wasn't really happy with how this sketch turned out and I think the reason for that is that I didn't really blend the pastels and because of that there wasn't really a nice variation in edges, soft edges and hard edges and that's something that I really try and focus on in my work. 
So before going into the portrait, I did a little blending practice with a cotton swab. Okay, so on to the final piece. I had to do a portrait. Even though this isn't their portrait set, and there aren't a ton of traditional portrait colors, but I do think it ended up working as a portrait. I had such a good time building up this piece and layering these oil pastels. They were such a dream to work with, and I'm so excited to work with them more. These were so buttery to work with, but they weren't too soft that I couldn't get the details or hard edges in. So for me, this portrait was really about having moments of softness and also having moments of expressionistic mark making. And I really enjoyed having little pops of color throughout the portrait. I decided to do a portrait in profile because I find profiles challenging and so I wanted to practice that a little bit. Let me know if you find portraits in profile more challenging. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's just easier for us to tell when something's off. That being said though, I think portraits in profile are really striking and beautiful to look at. Something I always enjoy is finding and creating interesting shapes in hair. You probably know this by now, but I don't really like painting the individual strands of hair. I find it much more visually appealing to simplify the hair. This is all preference, of course, but it is something I've learned about myself. Hair is also a great place to practice varying your edges and introducing fun colors because you can take a few more creative liberties than you can with the face. So you can see here I went kind of crazy with the colors in the hair. I probably could have simplified it even more, but I think after doing some blending with a q-tip, it looked, it looked pretty good. So one thing with hair is that the ends of the hair, you know, where the hair has been cut, is usually a much softer edge than the top of the hair. But then again, it really depends on the hairstyle. A shorter cut, you know, more cropped to the head will have that softness all around. But it's just something to think about and consider while you are painting or drawing a portrait. That is enough about hair. I will let you enjoy the rest of the portrait process in peace, and I will check back in at the end.
Okay, so I think that is it for this video. Thank you so much to Above Ground for sending me these Sennelier oil pastels. I will have a link to their online store down below and also a link to this set of pastels if you are interested, but I do highly recommend checking them out in person if you are ever in Toronto. It is heaven for artists, trust me. Also, a big thank you to my channel members. Your support means so much. If you want to get a little paint tube badge next to your name in the comments, then you can hit the join button and become an art friend. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. I will see you all very, very soon with another video. Bye bye